Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. If you have ever spent a day at the beach, you would have noticed how the water recedes away from the shore and comes back. This is because of the changing sea levels. And this rise and fall of sea levels is called tides. But what causes them? Well, there are many factors which are responsible for this, but the most important one is the moon's gravity. The moon's gravity pulls the ocean's water towards it. This causes a high tide in the areas directly facing the moon. But this also lowers the sea level on either side of the earth. But we experience two high tides and two low tides per day. We still have to account for one more high tide. This occurs on the opposite side of the first high tide. And this is where it gets interesting. First, let's understand that the earth and the moon pull at each other because of gravity. The moon's gravity also pulls the earth towards it. The sea on the far side is also pulled towards the moon. So this causes an increase in sea level, but not as much as on the side facing the moon itself. Next, we have to understand that when the Earth rotates, the centrifugal force or the outward force one experiences when sitting on a spinning merry-go-round also causes the sea levels to rise. So this increase in sea level causes the second high tide. If tides are caused by gravity, then what about the effect of the Sun? After all, that's the biggest object in the solar system, right? Well, yes, the Sun does have an effect on tides, but it's not as dramatic as lunar tides. But that's not to say it does not have a role to play. When the Earth, the Moon and the Sun line up, or on new moon and full moon days, the gravitational forces of the Sun and the Moon combine and we experience spring tides, wherein the high tides are at its highest and the low tides are at its lowest. But on half moon days, the Moon's gravity and the Sun's gravity pull in different directions. At these times, we experience neap tides, wherein the difference in low tides and high tides, or the tidal range, is at its lowest. Tides also support oceanic ecosystems by circulating nutrients among aquatic organisms. Not just that, tides are also a potential source of energy. It is extracted from the kinetic energy obtained during the rise and fall of tides. The process of electricity generation involves placing turbines in the path of the tides. And there are three main ways of doing this. The first is by using a barrage which is similar to a dam constructed on rivers. It uses the difference in height between the high tide and low tide. When the tides are high, water flows through the turbine of the barrage to rotate the turbine blades. We can also use the flow of water into natural or artificial lagoons. The turbines rotate as in when the lagoons get filled and emptied. Though their functions are similar to barrages, they can be constructed on natural coastlines as well. The third way is to place underwater turbines, also called as tidal stream generators much like wind turbines that are used to generate electricity. While tidal energy is a great source of renewable energy, it also has its pitfalls. For example, it is known to have altered shorelines and affect marine life. If you have ideas on how to overcome these challenges, let us know in the comments. Until then, stay tuned to Skill Link.